Paul said, speaking of galleries, what are some hard truths for up and coming artists who want to do the gallery route? How do we prep? You're gonna be turned down a lot. You will be turned down more than you're accepted into a gallery. Don't give up, keep trying. There was one gallery owner, a friend of mine was telling me this story. Guy came in, showed him his work. He wanted a display and the, the gallery owner could recognize, like this kid's gonna be good. He's just not there yet. Told him, you go paint a hundred paintings. And he said, you paint that many? and then I want you to come back to me. And the kid left, he was all dejected, but he, he did it. He did what he was told, painted one, 200, whatever it was, came back and showed the guy, and the guy, the gallery owner's like blown away. Like he knew he just needed to, refi he needed to spend the time painting more to refine that more. But if you're going to get into galleries, you are going to get rejected a lot. And a lot of the galleries don't like realism as much. They typically will go for something that is more stylized, something that's more impressionistic or abstract is what I find sells better at galleries. And the other thing is listen to the gallery owner. See if you can get somebody who works there who will take the time to talk to you because they know what their customers are looking for. If most of their customers want this more modern abstract look, it makes no sense for them to try to sell your roses because that's not what their customers are looking for. Don't be discouraged when a gallery owner tells you no, that, that it's not a fit for them. They know what they're gonna sell. They're not gonna take up wall space with something they know is not going to sell. Paul said, speaking of traditional galleries, because some gallery managers are very snooty when receiving portfolios and bodies of work, should doing some research on a gallery's background. Absolutely. The more you know, I mean, it's like going for any job interview. The more you know about the company, the better off you are. You walk in off the street and you're like, oh, I hear you pay sell paintings. I got some paintings. They're gonna be like, get out. Like, I'm not. No, absolutely research. And that can help you too, because you know what that gallery sells, what they're looking for. That does, that really does matter. There are some galleries that will showcase beginner art. I forget the name of the gallery. It's over in Frisco. And she just started up again too, which is hilarious. But she calls herself an art curator. And I don't have a lot of respect for what she does because she doesn't protect the paintings. So this is, is somebody who was trying to do normal, like get professionals in, but I guess she wasn't getting enough professionals. So she was like, oh, I'm going to bring in beginner artists too and mix them in with the professionals work. And all the professionals are like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, I'm not displaying my work next to the beginner who it looks like they painted it with their knees. Not happening. I was one of those professionals who was like, never again the other thing is in that case with the, the woman who was okay with like super beginner like you just picked up your first paintbrush two days ago she would hang that artwork she did not protect the paintings they were getting damaged in her possession because she didn't know how to take care of them i don't know what kind of i guess supposedly she went to school for it but she doesn't know how to take care of the art they had a big event at this gallery and people were leaning on the wall against the artwork against the stretch canvases, against, there were charcoal drawings displayed that were not framed behind glass, just charcoal people could put their hands across, which is so unprofessional for the artist and that the gallery accepted that. I don't want anything to do with a gallery that is not gonna take my work seriously. I, I wanna give a warning about that on galleries that are, are willing to take in the beginner, you know, you've been painting two days, come on in. Those are not, no, I don't think they're even worth your time. I don't think you're likely to sell much. I don't think the customers take, Obviously the customers didn't respect the art. Point is, you want to do your research because I mean, you can, you can always say you never know, maybe they'll take it. But do you really wanna waste your time going in to a gallery who you know you don't create what they're looking for? You know they never have shown artwork that looks like yours. When you do realism, it's a little bit harder with a lot of these galleries because you have to be, so, if, you're in, if you do realism, you have to be so insanely good at your realism before a gallery would even consider you. You, you can't, like, I feel like a lot of times abstract doesn't need to refine their skills quite as much as realism does in order for a gallery to want to, to even consider you. So it is a challenge, but yeah, do your research and see what they're selling because you can save your, yourself a lot of time if you already know that gallery never has work. And another thing with the portfolios, we have a tendency to want to bring in a portfolio of every work we've ever done. Here's 30 paintings for you to look at. Here's 50, 100 paintings for you. They're gonna look at two maybe three. They're gonna flip through and be done for the most part. So, you know, maybe bring in a, a less than 10. You do not want more than 10. And make sure you've got your best stuff, best of the best of the best, because chances of them even flipping to the page of your best is not likely. I would rather see less work, but really, really good work than 100 crappy things. You don't need to show them everything you've done. You wanna show them the best and you wanna show them the stuff that because you did the research. You wanna show them the stuff that you think will fit best with their galleries, with their clientele.